Isaiah chapter 2. The word that Isaiah, the son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. Okay, it's, it's chapter 1. Chapter 2 would represent the book of Exodus. There are 66 books in the Bible and there are 66 chapters in Isaiah. It shall come to pass in the last days, the second advent into the millennium, that the mountain of the Lord's house, not the church house, this is where Jesus Christ is going to be seated on the throne of David right before his temple that he will build in the millennium shall be established on the tops of the mountains and Jerusalem's on the mountains. That's why you find out and find up in the, in the gospel. He went up to Jerusalem. He came down from Jerusalem because Jerusalem is on a mountain and shall be exalted above the hills. Don't mind our neighbors. Is that today? No, it's not today. It's prophecy. And all nations shall flow onto it. That's surely not today. And there are Christians that make pilgrimages to the Holy Land. And they do it to see the footsteps of Jesus and the other nonsense. But they're not going to the Lord's house because the Lord's house is not there. The dumb of the rock is there right now. And many people, not all people, many people, all nations, many people, shall go and say. So all nations are going to worship the Lord Jesus Christ in the millennium, but not all the people of the nations. And the Bible speaks about, in one of the prophets, hopefully, Lord willing, we get to, that if they don't come when they're supposed to, there'll be no rain. Many people shall go and say, Come ye, and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord. That's the Gentiles coming. That's the Gentiles seeking God on his throne at the temple. And they're saying, Come. How do you know that's not the church age? Because Jesus speaks to the Christians and says, go. The world and the millennium say, come. And come for what reason? Let's go hear the Lord. Let's go hear Jesus. The church today says, come into our building and bring your worldliness. And we'll give you a worldly Jesus. Friend, the Bible speaks about in the millennium, if you go and preach Jesus, your family is going to kill you because you don't need to preach Jesus because Jesus is there in, in Jerusalem. Come ye, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord and the house of God of Jacob. If your God is not the God of Jacob, you don't have the God of the Bible. If your God is the God of the Pope, that ain't. If your God's the God of Mary, and he, if your God's the God of, of, of the emperors of, of China, and he, if your God's the God of, of, of government of America or, or Russia, the Tsars, and any, if you got an Italian, that ain't, if you got a Gentile, that ain't, you got an African, that ain't. It's the God of Jacob. Jacob came, I mean, Jesus came on his own. And when you run the genealogy in Matthew 1, and I think it's Luke chapter 3, that genealogy goes all the way back to Abraham. It goes back to King David. And he will teach us of his ways. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. You know, you know what the Gentiles are going to be coming in the millennium to the mountain of God? You know what they're going to do before Jesus Christ? They're going to do the same thing that Jesus Christ did on his ministry in this planet. He's going to teach the people. What are we going to do in the millennium? We're going to sit down. We're going to stand up. We're going to hear Jesus talk to us. 
just like he did in his earthly ministry. But when he came in his er earthly ministry, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, he came to the I mean, he came to the Jewish people. He didn't come to the Gentiles. When that woman, uh, the, the Gentiles said, "You know, Jesus, please heal my daughter. She's possessed with that." You know, you know what Jesus called her, a female dog. And he says, listen, I'm here for the nation of Israel. I'm here for the sheep. And she's, well, we get the crumbs. Well, put Jesus right there. Okay. And when he sends his disciples out, including Judas, don't go, don't go the way of the Gentiles. Don't go that route of the Gentiles. That's why you're in great error when you come in your church and you start, you know, the, 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 God, the, the Matthew's gospel. Matthew's gospel. That's not written to the church. That's not written to Christians. That's written to Jewish. You know why they run to Matthew and go to all the world and teach the nations and, and you know, baptize? Because they don't want to go to Mark 16 where it says going all the world. It's a big difference between the commission of, of Matthew and the commission of Mark. Because Matthew, we could say bring them in the church house. Mark says get out of the church house and go to them. Plain and simple. You the, the the mark sixteen you can't put on your church sign. All are welcome. Mark sixteen to the church commission. Get out there and tell them about Jesus. Matthew can say, "Come on in," because because what's going on? Matthew speaking about the nation of Israel, speaking about the millennial kingdom, a piece of land. Come into the land. Come. That's what the Gentiles are saying here right now. Mark tells the Christian, go. Come now, let us go up to the mountain, of, the mountain of the Lord, to the house of God, Jacob. And he will teach us of his ways. And we will walk in his paths. Are the Gentiles doing that today? You've got Christians today who are going to and have left God because they didn't get their Republican president and their whole life, and I've been told, has been miserable, rotten, and that's it. That's not the way of God. These are Gentiles. You know, you got to look, where do these Gentiles come from? They're the sheep nations. They're the nations that helped Israel in the tribulation period, and they had no idea what they were doing. They were just, you know, hey. You're a Jew. The Antichrist is after you. You're in prison. I'll visit you. You're sick. You can't get medical attention. Let me give you some iodine. Let me give you cough medicine. You're poor. Here's some clothing. Here's some food. Because the Antichrist, that world leader, doesn't want to take care of you. And we're just helping you out of, out of kindness. And God said, I will bless them that bless you. Come now, enter into the, into the rest. And to that rest as they enter the millennium where the Jews are now the Jews of all the world. And now they're seeking God. They weren't seeking God in the tribulation period. They were just helping God's people and they didn't even know. It. Jesus said, you visit me when I was sick. You visit me when I was in prison. They're like, when did, when did we do that to you, Lord? When you helped my brother. And now in the millennium, these same people that helped the Jews, let's go get Jesus. Why? Because look at all what he's done for us. All the people that didn't help those Jewish people. Man, they're in hell today. We're in the millennium. This is great. The curse is removed except for the snake. This is wonderful. We ought to give it all to Jesus. Give it to God. And they do. For out of Zion, Jerusalem, shall go forth. What's that? What's those two words say? The law is coming back. The law is coming back in Jacob's trouble. That temple, there's going to be a temple in Jacob's trouble. The tribulation period. In three and a half years, the devil's going to cut those Jews off from that temple. In the millennium, there's a temple. There's the priest, Zadok. It's going to serve that temple before the Lord Jesus Christ. And they're going to bring their offerings. And it'll be all changed. I believe one of the changes Ezekiel speaks about in the millennium, they, they, they don't offer a lamb in the morning and a lamb at even no more. 
the lamb is there on the throne of David. I think it's a goat on the you have to go and check that. But they do offer an ammo in the morning and ammo in the evening, but it's not a lamb no more because you have the lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. But look at that. The law. Don't you dare go and, and teach in the, in the church. The law is done. The law is finished. All right. We're not under law. But the law is coming back in, in, in the time of the tribulation. Jacob's trouble. The law is there in the millennium. And listen, we are to a point, not salvation, not salvation. But we are to a point under the law. Paul says, by the knowledge of the law of the schoolmaster, I know I'm a sinner. And Paul writes, I believe, to the Romans, says, listen, don't steal, don't, don't bear false witness. He tells them everything but the Sabbath. Why? So as a Christian, you're not saved by the law, but the law gives you a good character. The law gives you a good reference. The law, you do right. And then James comes along and says, faith and works. You can't please God if you don't know what doesn't please God and what pleases God. The law. I will be a respectable Christian if I do not violate, thou shalt not commit adultery. But, you know, I'm, on, I'm not under law. I'm under grace, so I can go commit all the adultery I acts I want to do. And then John went right to the Christian and say, if we confess our sins, what sins are we talking about? Because if, if I'm not under the law and I have nothing to do with the law, then I can do whatever. Where does sin come from? By the knowledge of the law. Now, I am not saved by the law. I'm saved by the grace and the finished work of Jesus Christ. But if I want to have character, I want to have a standing, I want to get gold, silver, and precious stones, I want to hear, well done, my conduct, the law, the law helps me. It's my schoolmaster. This is what God does not want. This is what God's not approved of. But the law is coming back. And the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Second Advent. And he, God, shall judge among the nations. When he comes back, Second Advent. Judges the sheep from the goats. The goats go to hell. The sheep go into the millennium. This is the one that mounts on the white horse, the king of kings, the lord of lords, has a sword coming out of his mouth, and his eyes are flame of fire, with the church behind him. And shall rebuke all people or many people. Many. Why not all? Because there are sheep nations that go into the into the millennium. How many people are coming out of the tribulation period, the second advent, that are going to go to hell? Many. Many are going to walk the broad way. I know we use a broad way and in, in, in narrows a gate that leads to life, but that's written in Matthew. That's written to the people coming out of the tribulation, to the Jewish people in the nation. What is the broad way that leads us to life in the millennium? I mean, the tribulation. They don't even know they're doing. You got to do one thing. You got to help the Jew, and they don't even know what they're doing. What's the broad way? Kill the Jews, reject the Jews, have anything nothing to do with the Jews. And you know what the world context will be is to follow the Antichrist and receive the mark and, and worship the devil is you got to be against that Jew. Many are going to take the mark. Why? Because they want to survive. They want to live. They want to. Listen, there are many religions, including the KKK in America. They despise the Jew. The Catholic Church despises the Jew. Nations have been despising the Jew. Many are going to go the broad way that lead us to death and destruction. Now, we can spiritually apply things in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and they become great evangelistic tools, but the contents is Jewish. And I know there's some Baptists out there that are going to hear this and they're going to wipe me off the, the planet Earth. Well, that's okay. 
God loves me. My mom loves me. My wives love me. My children love me. That's perfectly fine. You don't love me. Boom. But we'll see at the judgment seat of Christ. We'll see who's right. And if I am right, according to what the scriptures say, then you got a problem. Now, many people. You see that and all the way to the period anymore? You want a monstrosity? From the word and all the way down to the more, the period, that is written on the United Nations building in New York City. And that is on the title of this lesson. When you look at the title and say, what, what, what's that concrete wall? Isaiah chapter 2, verse 4. It's not the it's not the United Nations bringing in peace, you know, the UN peacekeepers. You know how many wars have been since the United Peacekeepers? You know how many wars there have been since popes have been saying, peace, peace, peace. There is no peace, saith the Lord, to the wicked. What they have put in cement on their building is not the reference to the nations. It's the reference to the Lord Jesus Christ. And they shall beat their swords, weapons, into plowshares. The plowshares, the millennium, all curses are removed and man crops are going to spring up like nothing. You're not going to have need of the stock market because you're going to have too much stock to have a market. You wouldn't be able to sell your produce in the millennium because it would just be too much produce to sell. And their spears and the pruning hooks. Again, that's, that's the curse removed off the earth. And one of the main occupations of the millennium is agricultural. Animals and crops. You're not going to have pornography. You're not going to have computers. You're not going to have electricity. You're not going to have cable TV. Amen. Glory to God. And then other Baptists. Uh, you won't have your cell phone. Uh, I don't want to get saved. You won't have cell phones, electricity, and computers in hell either. Uh, I'm going to hell. People in hell all eternity. Uh, where was it the other day? We're in the doctor's office. And and an Asian woman, I, I don't I can't tell Chinese. They call her up to the window. She does her business. She goes, so she sits down. She pulls out her, uh, They call her back up. She gets in and does. And then she, so she says, uh. My wife, Tracy, used to hate. We go to a restaurant. And, you know, as a family, we go to restaurant and we talk. We have a good time. But you, you get, they all sit around the table, these family. Uh, you want a crisis in America? It ain't, won't be COVID-19. But this is extra. This won't cost you anything. You want a crisis? Get yourself a laser and shoot all those satellites down that are flying above our head so there'll be no cell phone reception and get rid of all the cell, cell phone towers. That will that that will be an epidemic paramedic beyond control that you don't have to worry about shots. I can't believe how I don't know whoever came up with it first, but you know, coming out with the first cell phone, how much people uh, you know? People in the grocery store, they can't drive a car. They're trying to drive a shopper's carry while talking on the phone, crashing into you. There are people on bikes. This is extra. They're going down the road on a bike, and they're on the... Uh, I don't know where I got off on that one. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation. Neither shall they learn war any more. That's kind of interesting. Uh, let's see if I can find it. Revelation 19. Uh, Revelation 19. No, Revelation 20. Now, men will learn war no more in a thousand years of Jesus Christ. That's scripture. Look at Revelation 20, verse 7. And when a thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loose out of his prison. And he shall go out and deceive the nations, 
It's what we're talking about in Isaiah too, right? The nations that are in the millennium. There have been people who have been born uh, of, the, of the people that, that, that came out of the tribulation period that helped Jews. There have been children born to them and they're making nations. By the thousand years, there's a group of people like the nation of Israel that did not remember the wilderness, that did not witness all the plagues upon Egypt. Okay? History is coming back. History is going to be redone, even if you change it. Which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, and the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. A lot. Of At the end of the millennium, there is a multitude, unnumerable, and they went out on the breath of the earth and compassed the camp of saints about Jerusalem, the beloved city, Jerusalem. Now, they're not going to remember war no more once Jesus takes that throne. They come into that beloved city that we're looking at right now. At the end of chapter 2, verse 4, they shall learn, they shall learn war no more. And yet the devil's going to grab a multitude of people and they're going to attack Jesus and the saints. With what? Genesis chapter 4. You're not coming up with a Christmas message? Something better than Christmas. We'll go all the way back to the two forms of people. In Genesis 4, verse 8, and Cain talked with Abel, his brother. Abel was the right one. Cain was the wrong one. That they were in the field, and Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and slew him. It does not mention a weapon. Isaiah chapter 2. It says that all the weapons, Isaiah chapter 2, are they're going to be farm utensils. Who was Cain? Wasn't he a farmer? Who was Abel? Wasn't he a shepherd? A, 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 a person that dealt with the animals? What did I just tell you? Plowshares and pruning hoes. What are the two occupations of the millennium? Animal husbandry? And produce and farm and agriculture. We're going right back to it. And there was no. You think God would mention a weapon, whatever, can you? And yet the devil's going to come up with masses and masses of people. You know, Cain was a mass of people. He was one person. Oh, but Cain killed one quarter of the population of the world. One quarter of the population of the world was killed by Cain in chapter 4. God's going to wipe out, I don't know how many, with the most, it's an innumerable host of people. In one moment, fire is going to come down. What am I trying to get to? Is this a pony? It's not a pony trail. There are no weapons. The devil gathers a bunch of people, and they're coming at God with their fist. There's a possibility that Cain killed Abel by just Beating him with his fist. You know, some people say a rock. Show me rock. Show me rock through Genesis of Revelation. Well, you know, they stoned him and that's the law. It could have been, that doesn't say so. By the time the devil comes at the end of the millennium, there is no weapons. And yet he gathers a multiple force of unnumberable people to try to get God, Jesus Christ, and the Christians and the Jewish people. He hates those Jewish people. O house of Jacob, come ye and let us walk in the light of the Lord. Now that's not the tribulation, that's not 
the second advent, that's not the millennium. That's a paragraph map. That's Isaiah turning to the to Ju Judah and Jerusalem right now. Will you come and get right now? And we saw in chapter 1, verse 18, we see God right now. Come now. Now. Come now. Let us reason together. Now Isaiah steps up to the plate in chapter 2, verse 5. Oh, house of Jacob. Not Israel. Israel's been in captivity of the Syrians. But Jacob, all of Israel. Though verse 1 says he's speaking to Judah and Jerusalem. And in verse 5, oh, come on, children, Jacob, all of you. Therefore thou hast forsaken thy people, the house of Jacob. Speaking about God. Why? Why would he why would Isaiah tell the people come if they were not there already? There's this big ark somewhere where, where it was built by Noah. If Noah and his wives and his children and their wives were in the ark already, why would God say come in? They weren't in. So why would Isaiah tell the nation of Israel, come? Because they're not in. They're living outside the Lord. And when, when the Christian Jesus says, go into the world, the world's not inside. But the Laodicean church age in their great era has brought the church. And has brought the world inside the church. Though the world will never be the church because only the saved could be. And you got a pile of messed up doo doo. And you got people from the Laodicean church eh, that think they're going to heaven because they're in a church. They've been given an office in the church, they've been given a duty of the church. They do the church's things, but at death or the rapture, when it comes, they'll find themselves in hell. I don't want to be on that standing. You know, I'd rather be guilty of God to say, you know what? You ought to have led that person to the Lord Jesus Christ. But you didn't. I'd rather, you know what? I'll, I'll plant a seed, Lord. I'll, I'll water a seed. And Lord, I'll have you send somebody else who will back up what I've said. Then have, all right. We're going along, let's go along. Okay, let's do the Romans road and then let's, let's let's say this prayer and have that person go off in eternity into hell. I said a prayer. And they're not saved. I'd rather have the Lord, okay, I'll send somebody else. You didn't do the job efficiently. You were too precautious. And I'll get reward. If God sends somebody else and that person gets saved because I was a planter in the water, and then rather you were too hasty and you just got quickly a salvation that wasn't a salvation, which is damnation. I, I don't want to be in that part. And I've talked to people, I've dealt with people, I said a prayer. That's why I'm against it. I have tried with my heart and I've tried with my with tears. And I've tried with my heart crying to deal with people. Come on, man. You, you, I don't think you're saved. I can't know, but your life doesn't prove salvation. I said a prayer. I had one man one time. And I dealt with him. I dealt with him. I was strict time. I won't tell you where it was, but, you know, I had a strict amount of time to do and I, I tried to deal with him. I had an open Bible. He was reading the passages. And each and every time, the pastor prayed for me. Come on, man. All right. Just, let's, let's reassure. Let's. The pastor prayed for me. Come on, man. Do you know of a surety you're going to heaven? The pastor took care of that for me. I don't think he was inside. You know, the whole world at Noah's Ark stayed on the outside. And when the rains came and the floods broke up in Europe and all that, they died and ended up in hell. 
O house of Jacob, come in. Why? Come ye. Why? Because you're not in. And today, I said, the Laodicean church age brings the world in. Bring them in. Bring them in. Therefore, oh, therefore thou hast forsaken the people of the house of Jacob. That's God's people. God has forsaken his people in the time of Isaiah, which is the law, because they had not done what God told them to do. Christian, you're saved. You are a child of God. If you have not done what God's told you to do, don't you dare expect gold, silver, and precious stone the judgment seat of Christ. Don't you expect to hear well done. Because if you expect to hear well done and you have forsaken what God's told you and you're saved and you know you're saved, the devil knows you're saved and God knows you're saved and your name is written in the Lamb's book of life, but you have not obeyed what God's told you to do. And if he rewards you and gives you a trophy for trying, God will have to apologize to every Jew in hell. And God's not going to apologize because he's holy and righteous. I'm going to try to apply Isaiah's best ability I can by spiritualizing an application. Spiritual, not doctrine. Doctrine, Isaiah's written to Judah and Jerusalem. I will try to spiritualize to us Christians. Because they replenish, filled or supplied from the east, not the north, God. They went east. I, I got to say it. I'm sorry. The church today puts hope and care of three wise men that came from the east. At the birth of Jesus. And that's unscriptural. And how many Baptist churches have a nativity scene with all the characters, which are idols. And got three wise men, which is completely, utterly. You know what I learned today by archaeology? Again, a, a, a page that I get on my way. I never learned. I, I learned this. I learned something new every day. It's possible that when Mary and Joseph went, you know, the baby Jesus in the manger. You know how you see the nativity scene? They got this little roof and all that. You know, you know it's possible archaeology says that it wasn't a building. It was a cave. I don't know. But I, I, I will ask you, because you said over here. Where is it again? He will teach us of his way. Do you imagine Jesus in the millennium saying, all right, you Baptists come over here. We're going to have a lesson on Tammuz and Baal and my birthday. Brother Stanley Hayward, yes, sir. Come on up. Yes, yes, Lord Jesus. Will you explain to him the truth of Christmas? I know you were trying to tell him, but I give you the authority to speak to him. Whoa! He offended me. I don't care. You listened to him because he knew exactly what he was talking about. Ask the congregation of Baptists that didn't get crowns and Stiley got a crown for preaching the truth. Marvel not, my brethren, the world hates you. And have I become my, your enemy because I've told you the truth? Imagine Jesus, all right, will you teach these people what Christmas really was? Can you imagine the Christians that put me down one day while I'm in the millennium? They say, man, he's got crowns. I can't wear a crown. I believe in the millennium that, that Christians will gain an inheritance by what they do for the Lord Jesus. You imagine the Christians that hate you, and I've had plenty of them. You imagine the Christians that, that, that try to stop you, and I have plenty of them. You imagine the Christians that rebuke you for you for me doing right. You imagine Jesus rounding them Christians up saying, Stanley, you get one city. Amen, Lord God. Thank you for one city. And all these people that hated you, and all these people that tried to stop you, and all these people that are not wearing crowns, they're under your authority. Man, is that going to bite?
and soothsayers. Who's supposed to go to soothsayers? The children of God. The, the Jews or the Christians. No one. The soothsayers like the Philistines. The Philistines are the enemies of God and have been the enemies of God since Saul. And they please themselves in the children of strangers, Gentiles. Do you want to ask Jonah and Peter about Gentiles? Even Paul to a point. Now, Paul acknowledged he's the apostle to the Gentile, but you know, he realized he spent many years in jail because God told him, don't go to Jerusalem, and he loved the Jews, and he went to Jerusalem. Where did he end up where God wanted him after all that? In Rome. I'm not saying Paul hated the Gentiles, but he had that love for his people. Their land, the Gentile land, is full of silver and gold. Neither any end of their treasures. Their land is also full of horses. Now, I don't know what date I have. Just I don't know who that land is. I don't know who those strangers are. But I have, I don't know what date I wrote these down. But in, in the United States of America, there are 9,500,000 horses. In China, there is 6,823,000,000 horses. In Mexico, there is 6,350,000 horses. There's a Gentile land. And I know the time I was there, there's no America, but I mean, we're, this is mostly all Second Advent too. Solomon went to Egypt. To get horses that God in the law said don't do. And to look at the thing today, United States, China, and I don't know really much about Mexico. I really haven't looked at it, but there's gold and there's silver and there's China is filled with treasures. I mean, they're known for their swords, they're known for their China, they're known for their, their everything. Their land also full of horses, neither is there any end to their chariots. You find that in Nahum chapter 2, verse 3. Why are they running to this land of money and armor, military? Because they can protect us more than God. And the Christians, again, application, the, the, the American Christians today, well, Donald Trump in America can protect us better than God. Praise Donald Trump and Pfizer for giving us a vaccine. And I have heard Baptists say, this vaccine, you know, and then next year everything's going to be a hunky dory and great. You haven't read Jeremiah. Or you didn't grasp Jeremiah. It's the reliance in man and horses and not God. And remember that as we go through Isaiah and we go come into Jeremiah, Lord willing. Because in Jeremiah, they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna turn Catholic before there was even a Catholic. They're gonna say the Queen of Heaven. And since we left off burning to the Queen of Heaven, this is why we're broke, poor, miserable, and rotten, terrible. So let's strike up the mass and have Merry Christmas with the Christmas tree in Jeremiah chapter 10. Oh Styling, wear a crown, wear a crown, wear a bright and shiny crown. Because he spoke the word faithfully. Their land is also full of idols. It's all around them. It's all around today. United States, China, and Mexico are all nations today surrounded of idols. They worship the works of their own hands. Made in China, made in the United States, and made in Mexico. You can find those labels. The only ones that hate this messages I'm going to teach are the ones I, the toes that I stepped on. Because they know they're guilty. That which their own fingers have made, man made. That's what it is. 
and the mean man. That's not mean. That means low. It's an opposite of great. The low down man. The guy at the bottom of the totem pole. Bow it down. I had. We don't bow down before the Christmas tree. You bow down to water that thing. You bow down to get the presents. And you bow down to put the tinsel and the ornaments on the lower parts of that tree. Tomorrow's Christmas. It should be all over with. The great man. He's the opposite of the mean man. Humble himself. All right. Therefore, forgive them not. Isaiah, you're cruel. You're rotten. Why would you not forgive them? Because verse 9 goes back to verse 7 and 6. They see soothsayers. They represent themselves with the Gentiles. There's more silver and gold. What was the song in, in Rudolph the Red-Nosed Ranger? Silver and gold. I love silver and gold. Remember Cornelius? See the devil knows. The abominable snowman. Their land is full of horses. They're trusting in horses rather than God. And they got idols. And they worship the things of their hands. And imagery and idolatry. And the, the, the low man bows down before the idolaters. The great man humbles himself before the gods. Small g-o-d-s. And the goddesses. G -O, small g-o-d-d-e-s-s. And when they do that for the false gods and the false goddesses and the idolatry and put in their strength in man and not God and horses and not God, Isaiah says, forgive them not. You know what God tells Jeremiah? Don't even pray for them. There are churches today, the lives to see in church, they're making prayers of God, and God's like, I ain't listening to you. Why? Because you think you're rich, you think you're great, you think you're wonderful, you think. Again, this preaching is not liked in this because it's the truth. And they didn't like it when Paul preached it. I'm not, listen, I am far from Paul. And you know what they did with Jeremiah who preached? And I'm far from Jeremiah. They put him in jail. 